Welcome once again, AP Calculus AP students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we're going to start our video series over topic 4.3. And topic 4.3 is, is about more contextual representations of the derivative that don't really have to do with the motion of an object. You're going to find that 4.3 and 4.1, if you're following the CED, are very similar in that they want to talk about meanings of derivatives and how to find them within the context of a typical word problem. Our first example is going to have to do with snow falling on a driveway. It's a, a pretty renowned problem that came from an AP exam um, back in 2010, and it deals with Janet shoveling snow on the driveway. Um, you will need a graphing calculator for this problem, so hopefully you've got one standing by, and we're going to resort to, to using it here in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and read this rather lengthy stem. It starts by saying that there is no snow on Janet's driveway when snow begins to fall at midnight. From midnight to 9 a.m., snow accumulates on the driveway at a rate modeled by f of t equals 7t times e to the cosine of t cubic feet per hour, where t is measured in hours since midnight. Janet starts removing snow at 6 a.m. when time is 6. The rate g of t in cubic feet per hour at which Janet removed snow from a driveway at time t hours after midnight is modeled by this three-piece piecewise function that each piece has a constant rate of change at which she's shoveling snow. Boy, there's a lot of information in this question. Now, fortunately, we're not going to have to use every little detail of it for the purpose of this video, because in this video, we are only going to ask one question, and that is find the rate of change of the volume of the snow that's on the driveway at 8 a.m. There were several other questions, part B, C, and D, that followed that we will actually talk about in my class as the year goes on, but we're going to need to acquire more calculus knowledge before we can address those. But for the purpose of part A, this goes hand in hand with what's really going on in topic 4.3. Now, the thing that I want students to understand about this problem, there are two things going on. We have snow that's falling, and we are given a rate at which that's happening. So it says that snow accumulates at a rate modeled by f of t. So we're going to say that the snowfall rate is going to be our f of t in this case. But the question in the problem addresses the rate at which the volume of snow sits on the driveway. So if Janet doesn't do anything and stays in bed all day and the snow keeps falling, then the rate of snowfall is indeed the rate of snow that's on the driveway or the rate of the volume of the snow. But Janet got up at 6 a.m and started shoveling. And we realize that in this particular problem, we're focused on 8 a.m., at which point she is in the third level of her piecewise function snow removal model. And we find out that that is going to have to play a role as well. So we also have snow removal. That's the act of her shoveling snow. And there is a rate associated with that. And that's what g of t is, because it says up here the rate g of t of which Janet removed snow is modeled by this thing. It is very common throughout the AP Calculus exam in the course itself that you will be presented a model that represents a rate that doesn't look like a rate. It doesn't look like a derivative. We don't see prime marks attached to f of t or g of t, but we as students and teachers have to realize that those are rates nonetheless. Now, in order to come up with the rate of change of the volume of the snow, all we need to do is figure out what is the rate of change at which the snow is falling at time eight, and subtract the rate at which Janet is shoveling 
at time 8, which we actually know. <laughs> we know that g of 8 is going to be 108. We know that that is certainly a constant value all the time throughout those two hours. What we don't know necessarily right now off the top of, the, of our heads is what f of 8 is, and that's where the calculator is going to come into play. So let's plug that in and see what we get. So here we are. I'm using the TI Inspire calculator. Of course, any type of graphing calculator is certainly going to work here because what you've got to do, first of all, is enter your 8 into that f of t equation. Now, I want you to realize if, if this was the actual function, uh, I'm sorry, the actual free response question, all parts that we were going to solve, I would certainly suggest that we consider uh, uh, storing that function f of t. I've talked about how to do that in a few other videos. On the TI Inspire, you can do it by hitting the Control Math Template button to bring up colon equal, and then you just type in the equation or expression 7 times t times e to the cosine of t power. And then it will be stored. If you're using a TI-84, you can do the exact same thing by just storing that into your Y1 menu. Now, we just simply plug in our 8, F of 8. On the TI Inspire, I like to put a decimal after my entry because I know that that's going to guarantee that I'm going to get a decimal output. And if I hit enter, I see that I get about 48.417. That means that snow is falling at that rate, 48.417, and I think this is measured in cubic feet. I know that looks a little large, like, whoa, that's a lot of snow, <laughs> but that's a cubic feet per hour. And then we're going to subtract, right, we're going to take our answer and subtract our value 108 which is what g of 8 is. And what we see on our calculator is indeed our answer, negative 59.583. So we'll return to the document and we'll enter that and try to give it a units. So here we are once again back at our document. And you'll notice that I went ahead and put an approximately equal there. It's not a requirement, but it is very good mathematical communication. We had to round this f of 8 value that I had in the calculator entry because it's going to be some irrational number that's just going to go on and on and on. So that's a way to, to say that we knew that that was going to be the case and we're presenting this more properly. Although if you put an equal sign here on the AP exam, we will not deduct. We do, however, deduct if you don't have the correct units, or you would not say earn the point, let's say. So what we're going to do here is think about cubic feet of snow. Well, that would be the amount, and the rate divides that by hours, and we're just basically taking a couple of different rates, each of which were cubic feet per hour, and subtracting them. So that wouldn't change the fact that our label would be cubic feet per hour. And you can write that a variety of ways. It's perfectly suitable to say FT with a 3 over hour, and that would be fine. On the 2010 AP exam, problem number one here, part A, was just worth one point. You had to have all of those components in order to earn the credit, but it was a fairly easy entry-level question into that particular year's exam as long as you understood that these two values were indeed rates. I have a couple other videos coming up that's going to suggest some of the same kinds of things in a slightly different context. We hope that you check those out and learn a little bit more about how you can think of derivatives in contexts other than particle motion. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.